things in the end do make sense. But for now, it may be enough to consider that there really are just two plots. Someone sets out on a journey, and a stranger comes to town. How you, as your narrator, see yourself in those stories may have a profound effect on how the tale unfolds. This morning, I'd like to tell you one last story, a story that has stayed with me. Years ago, I was working at a boarding school near Washington, D.C., when an alumnus by the name of Joe Gargan, who was back for his 50th reunion, asked to speak to the student body. And here's what he said. I was a poor student before coming here, and things only got worse. It was back during the war. My parents were both working for the government. I was homesick and depressed, and I had three things going against me. First, while I was a poor student in general, I was particularly bad at French. Second, my French teacher happened to be the school's headmaster, Father McCavanaugh. And third, the school had a ritual whereby at the end of each marking period, Father McCavanaugh would gather the entire student body together and he would read every student's grade and every subject aloud to the entire student body. <laughs> Dr. Bird, this is a fascinating pedagogical technique when I strongly encourage you to pursue with faculty in the coming years. <laughs> Gargan continued, Father McCavanaugh started with the seniors, and by the time he got to the freshmen, I was ready to pass out. Finally, he got to me, and I will always remember what he said. Gargan Joseph, Math 71, English 73, French, and then he paused for just a moment. By this time, I had calculated that my French grade was somewhere in the high 20s. <laughs> and I was trying to brace myself for the onslaught that was sure to come. But then Father McCavanaugh said, French, 70, and he winked at me. <laughs> at that moment, I fell back in my chair with a profound and overwhelming sense of gratitude. It was like nothing I had ever experienced before. And I had such a feeling for Father McCavanaugh. That night, for the first time, I actually studied French. It didn't happen right away, but after a while, I actually started to get better at French. And then I learned that I liked the feeling of doing well in school, so I applied myself in other subjects as well. Things got better. In my senior year, I was in the National Honor Society, and I eventually won an academic scholarship to the University of Notre Dame, where I majored in French. <laughs> and I am back a half a century later and I've had all kinds of personal and professional successes. But I can't help but think that so much of that was a, reject, was a direct result of his gesture. Now, when I told my own kids this story, they all had the same response. Hey, when I get a 29, I get a 29. <laughs> but that's not the point, really. It was Joe Gargan's story to tell, but in the end, it was really about Father McCavanaugh. Whether it was what we call today emotional intelligence, his awareness of another's pain, his ability to measure justice against compassion, call it what you will. Earlier, I mentioned the graduation ceremonies are like semicolons. Semicolons force you to pause, but they also force you to connect, to link to the next and closely related independent clause. It's my hope that as your first person narration continues, that as you leave Academy Road, you will live out Culver's inspiring mission, that you will embody good character, that you will model responsible citizenship, that you will enrich the communities you encounter with your good leadership. I hope, too, that along the way, you will bless others with a generosity of spirit, that you will treat others better than that they deserve, and that you will know not just when and how, but also the wonders of a wink. Thank you. Lucky <laughs> Mustajab. Ramban Kile. <laughs> Stefan Andre Rash. in science, cum laude, and salutatorian of the class of 2019.
Sydney Hersing, the graduating senior prefect, will now close the senior register of the 2019 graduating class of Clover Girls Academy and present the register for safekeeping to Ava Dower, senior prefect for next year's first leadership rotation. The change of command and transfer of the colors represents the passing of responsibility and duty from one commander to another. The regimental sergeant major delivers the colors to the outgoing commander, who then returns them to the commandant, signifying the end of his duties. The commandant then passes the colors to the incoming commander, indicating the beginning of his tour of command. Attention to orders. Cadet Captain Joseph Ward, you are hereby relieved of all duties and responsibilities as a regimental commander. Your leadership and personal example were critical to the successful completion of this school year. We wish you fair winds and following seas. Cadet Captain Select Jeffrey Henderson, you are hereby appointed as regimental commander of the Culver Corps of Cadets. I have the greatest trust and confidence in your abilities to lead the Corps and develop a command climate which will match those who have held the position before you. Dismissed.